I've done it. I've finally gone and done it. This is a 3D printer. I have it. I've test printed things and I uh, have some opinions on it. So let's go through them. This is an Annette i8 or I think a Prusa i3, fairly similar model. This one was provided by Gearbest. I'll leave a link to them in the description down below so you can check out the price when and where you watch this. But uh, let's take a look. So first things first, I did a full video on the build process for this, at least a time lapse anyway. So if you want to check that out and want to see the full build process and the steps that are required to go into it, which is actually quite a lot then feel free to take a look at that video I'll leave that in the cards up above and probably on the end screen as well but uh, I do want to just make out a few points about it it was a rather large pain to do actually turns out that there are multiple variants of this printer so you actually need to go with the specific instructions that are on the SD card that comes inside the uh, USB you know SD card reader that you you know have to then plug into PC and stuff like that so uh, make sure that you use the specific variants of instructions that come with your printer and not anyone else's so do bear that one in mind. When I did finally get the right set of instructions a lot of the actual you know pictures and stuff like that were fairly unclear as to what you actually need to do where stuff needs to go ended up with a few extra parts and there was basically no uh, mention of calibration of the printer at all which is a massive thing that we'll come on to in a second. The overall build quality for the printer is pretty decent I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10 perhaps uh, obviously it's mostly plastic in the majority or acrylic in most of the places. I did actually have to do a bit of sanding on the top to even get this piece on and the Z-axis struts uh, that you actually use to move up and down don't actually reach all the way in and there's no security method so these do move around although you obviously do have the more secured uh, struts on the side that actually rolls up and down so there's a bit of security to that um, but I, I do want to mention that uh, because of the end stops uh, where when when the uh, 3D print starts it will heat up the bed first as it is a heated bed and then we'll move to the end stop so you've got the bed that goes backwards to its end stop uh, this one the, the extruder will move to the left hand side and hit its end stop and obviously Z axis the end stop is just down here by the, the uh, sort of main circuit board the problem with this is that when it actually moves itself to the uh, you know to the end stop it will move itself to the point where it's just teetering on the edge of the switch so that it's not you know fully bottoming out the problem with that is the switches aren't that great. The switches, well, they do a decent enough job, generally speaking, and it doesn't matter too much for the, the bed or the x-axis. The z-axis is really very important, especially for your first layer. So the, the problem with this here is that the switch doesn't actually have the same click on and click off points, which means that when the printer does its calibration and tries to move itself right to the edge of where the switch is on, that's actually not where the switch is off either, and it's not where the switch is on, so you can't really calibrate it by moving the, the Z stop up or down easily and effectively. It's just, it's very difficult to do. So you have to kind of guesswork and just have it hit the side of the bed a few times while you're moving up and down and letting it start a print and that sort of stuff so it is quite a big pain to do I would recommend connecting this to uh, your PC via the USB cable first and doing all that sort of calibration rather than doing what I actually did which is load up a few prints on uh, the SD card and then come print find that something went wrong try and do something else try and fix it try and change stuff and all that sort of stuff so having it connected via USB at least to start with will be a better option for you the menu system on the uh, sort of button enabled system at the top isn't too bad it is nice that it does have a display on it and it's obviously a fully self-contained unit you don't have to have it connected via USB if you don't want to uh, and the, the nice thing about it is that you can set up and pick from multiple files and there's a lot of settings that you can access but I would mention that the overall uh, menu is very slow it's very unresponsive the buttons are pretty naff when it actually comes to using them uh, there isn't actually any etching as to which button does what so you just have to work it out I will give you a hint the middle one is the menu button and the right one is the OK button and the left one is the back button and obviously have up and down but there you go uh, and I'd also mention that if a print does fail at any point first of all it just carries on because obviously it doesn't know that a print has failed because it's a fairly basic system and I'd also mention that if you do want to stop a print you actually have to uh, to be able to just stop a print or even pause one you have to press the menu button then go down to the SD card folder settings uh, sub menu and then scroll down to the stop print button it also doesn't bother to move the head at all or anything, it just leaves it exactly where it was when you stopped the print, so that isn't great. When it comes to slicing software, this one was also pretty confusing. It 
recommends you use Cura Ultimaker software, but that straight up didn't work for me. I did try and slice stuff uh, and obviously had the, the G-code file, but it wouldn't use the Z-axis at all. It would stay on the same plane and basically just print slightly wider circles until it all failed. So that one didn't really work too well, but uh, I ended up using the other software which is included on the SD card, which is uh, Repeater Host or Repeater Host, uh, and that worked perfectly. I was able to even 3D model stuff in Fusion 360 and import it in, which is also really nice and did work pretty well. The settings that I use will be listed in the description down below, but I can't recommend them necessarily as I do still have a lot of issues with the first layer being fairly naff, so do bear that one in mind. And if you have one of these printers or you are a bit more knowledge in the field, do let me know what you think about the settings and what I should change to make a better first layer print and overall better print quality as well. Print speed is mostly dictated by the settings that you're going to want to use. So this Darth Vader took, I think, two to three hours, uh, as did uh, this uh, kind of spinner thing. This took about an hour. Uh, the boat took about an hour to an hour and a half, that sort of thing, and the, the cube, the sort of calibration cube, that one took about 45 minutes, I think. So it's not sort of the, the you know, fastest, it's not the slowest, but it is mostly going to be down to the settings you use. While you're printing, you're going to be drawing about 200 watts from the wall, which isn't too bad, of course, but uh, overall, just wanted to, to give you the idea. Moving on to the price, at the time of filming, Gearbest actually have this available for £127 on sale. Now, depending on when and where you watch this, that might not be the same price, it might be more like £150, but either way, that's still a really very impressive price tag for a 3D printer that does let you print things that are actually pretty of sound quality. Really overall impressive uh, structural rigidity to a lot of the models that are here, especially if you put some infill in and obviously the support structures. And while the print quality isn't excellent, I'd probably give it somewhere between a 4 and a 6 depending on your settings and the model uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, it is still a very impressive price. I would mention though that the uh, filament is an extra about £27, at least at the time of filming, uh, at least from those guys for the, the size of filament that I have here, uh, 1.75mm and the, the amount that I got, so do bear that in mind. Now of course this does have some drawbacks for the relatively low price tag. Now, I would say that, as I said, print quality is probably between a 4 and a 6, but the fact that there's a range there and that it varies so much and quite drastically from fairly decent, although you can definitely see the print lines and there's some issues with the support material not really being there and, uh, you know, some issues with accuracy overall, uh, to stuff that is just wholly n doesn't work, crashes, you know, very terrible bottom layers and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's, it's quite drastic, and I'm not entirely sure if it's just the straight up settings that you, you use or, or not, uh, but the, the overall quality difference between model to model and sometimes even just between print to print can be pretty drastic. Well, I've mentioned the quality of the prints, the accuracy is also something that I want to touch on here. I designed something that actually requires you to be able to f uh, thread a pin through a hole. And the problem was that I, I measured the pin that needs to go through the hole, uh, you know, accurately as I possibly could. I even slightly oversized the hole that in the, the 3D model that I was printing, and yet I still had to drill through the plastic to be able to make the hole the right size. This was also an issue with the Nautilus or Nautilus or whatever you call them, gears, where these are obviously designed to be able to fit together pretty well, pretty easily, and obviously spin round in a sort of slightly mesmerizing fashion. But, uh, because, of course, because this printer isn't very accurate, I still had to drill the holes uh, and actually cut things down to be able to fit uh, the support brackets that hold it together uh, together so that I could then actually super glue it together so that it would work and be a you know, cool looking thing. So uh, it is quite annoying that the accuracy just isn't there. The filament holder that is included with it is pretty terrible. I actually had it bunch up so much that it knotted the filament right before the extruder and I had to basically rush to untangle it all so that it could continue a print that ended up failing anyway. So. Uh, it's it's a, a bit of an issue. You can 3D print something that actually holds the filament central so that it can spin more freely, but the fact that you have to 3D print something to be able to use your 3D printer better really is kind of annoying. As I mentioned, there's fairly little actual support or at least official support for this printer. And while there is a lot of community involvement since it is one of the cheapest ones out there, it is a bit of a shame that there are no pre-done settings that actually seem to give you decent print quality. The instructions are only available on the SD card that you, uh, you know it comes with. Uh, the overall just documentation and support for it is really 
very minimal, and actually the build instructions are pretty terrible as well. I'd also mention the overall, I guess, reliability just isn't quite there either. I mean, if you can see, this uh, this is meant to be straight, but it's actually offset because it just didn't work very well. Uh, and as I actually mentioned, uh, the accuracy just isn't there, so I actually had to cut down and drill out a bit of this hole uh, to be able to then super glue this uh, you know, spinner top to be able to then have a spinner that doesn't actually work. And I'll need to reprint it to get some hopeful accuracy out of it. So. It's a bit of a shame because it's a, it is a really nice printer, obviously for uh, 150 odd pounds. It is a fantastic value for money, but the accuracy isn't quite there. So it's, uh, I suppose, a fun toy. It's a nice uh, pre-pre-pre-production model, I guess. And while you can 3D print some accessories to make it better as well, the fact that you have to 3D print stuff to make a 3D printer work in any meaningful fashion is a bit of a shame. So I've harped on it and I've said that it's pretty good. So what's the conclusion? Well, it is actually pretty good for the money. Of course, that you can get better printers for relatively little more money. I mean, you're probably talking three or four hundred pounds for a printer that does two or three times better a job that's easier to build and all that sort of stuff. But of course, if you are in the category of someone who can only afford a £150 uh, 3D printer, then this is still a fantastic option. It is pretty loud, obviously the accuracy isn't necessarily there and you do have to do a lot of work to make your models look pretty nice. So there's a lot of build lines, a lot of sort of plastic drag that comes across them and all that sort of stuff. So there is uh, certainly a price to be paid for having this and going for the budget route. But if you do desperately want a 3D printer but you can only afford a cheap one, it's not too bad. When it comes to value for money, I think this is going to be a 4.5. It really is very impressive. Performance has to be something like a 3.5 with functionality also being a 3.5 as well. Styling I think is probably going to be a 4 with I think a 4 for Tetsu BB score and a worth money award. As I said, if you're after a super budget 3D printer, then this is pretty good, but you might want to save up and get a little bit of a better one, maybe with a slightly bigger print bed, although this is heated, which is very nice, uh, and a few extra features that make it a bit more easy to use, easy to build, uh, and more uh, just generally supported. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative. If you did, let me know in the comments down below, and feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. If you want to check out the price for this printer, when and where you watch this, I'll leave a link to Gearbest in the description down below who supplied the printer and the filament, uh, and that's kind of it really. I'll leave some of the videos over here for you in the subscribe button somewhere on the screen. I'll leave some of the videos on the car, up, up in the cards for you, and of course, the check out the build video to see the overall build process and just how long it took me. Uh, I think it was at least six hours to actually build this thing, so yeah, kind of a pain, but um, yeah, otherwise, uh, I guess that's kind of it. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.